This is my Create RC51 antenna rotor for a maintenance and repair job. My Create RC51 has been on the roof for about 15 years. As you can see, it needs at least a repaint. This here is the rotor cable, it has 7 wires and it still looks good. I only have to clean the cable and replace the isolation tape. The cable is connected, there are numbers on the wires which correspond with the connections on the rotor clock. Now let's test the rotor and see if it still turns. Now it works counterclockwise, the speed control works. Turn it clockwise, well that works. Now let's see if, um, if the end stops uh, still functioning and watch the red light. Okay, that's nice, that's working, the light is uh, on. Now let's test it, it counterclockwise, completely uh, 360 degrees. The direction indicator is not working as it should. It is stopping and jumping. This needs some attention and probably replace the potentiometer in the rotor. And yes, also the counterclockwise safety stop works fine. I start opening the rotor by removing the flange. And yes, this needs some cleaning. I remove the bolts which hold the top and bottom in place and tap with the plastic hammer to separate the top and bottom. With the top cover removed, I can visually inspect the inside of the rotor, which looks uh, pretty good. And here you see the potential meter I'm going to replace.
Here I take the final gear out, you don't need any special tools. I have access to the potentiometer now. I'm going to remove the old potentiometer and replace it with a new one. It is a 5 kilo ohm potentiometer which I bought from the local ham radio shop. Only two screws need to be removed, and no, not these ones. The two screws I need to remove are hidden behind the potentiometer gear. The gear is held in place by an allen screw, but even then it needs some persuasion to get the gear off the potentiometer. As you can see the potentiometer is not completely broken, it's probably dirt. But it has been on the roof for 15 years, I'm just changing it as a precaution. The wires have different colors, but just to be safe I mark them before removing them. I loosen the potentiometer with a 12mm spanner. Oh. Ok, I removed the potentiometer and I only need a 12mm spanner. I can't get the potentiometer out, I need to remove the capacitor first. The old potentiometer is out, now it's time to rebuild the router. Installing the new potentiometer has a problem, 
it does not fit completely in the bezel. I have to make the hole a little bit bigger. I use extra flux to let the solder flow better. Done. Now it's time to solder the three wires back. Put everything back together in reverse order, beginning with the capacitor. Sorry, putting back the potentiometer is out of view. The screws are self-tappers. Make sure you turn them yeah, yeah. counterclockwise until you hear a or feel a click. Then turn it clockwise so you use the same thread. Okay, these are self-tappers, so make sure you turn them backwards first until you hear or feel a click. Click. So you're in the same area. Turn it back first. Click. 
and then timing it. Okay. Well, this replacement is done. I'm back in the shed and filmed this with my phone. Before I put the case back together, I give the rotor a fresh paint job. Okay, and gears attached, and it's working. Focus, hello. So I've put it to the north, exactly. And now I will install the big gear with this knock, exactly. It. So it rests to this lever. I needed two hands for this, but it's easier than expected. Place the potentiometer before north and put the gear on with the end knock touching the end switch lever. Now test the safety end, it should stop before the end of the potentiometer. If you're not happy and be critical, change it one tooth and try again. Here you see that counterclockwise the end stop stops over the end of the potentiometer. So I adjusted it one tooth. When you're happy with the adjustment, put the top cover back on with all the screws and put the flange back on. The final test and one rotor ready to put back in the antenna mast.